Welcome to episode number 14 of The Roar, the show for all things Hershey Cubs, players, coaches, personnel, and news. I'm Joshua Gerhardt, alongside Clay Thomas, your hosts and broadcasters for the Cubs. Joining us today is the man, the myth, the legend, the magician. That's right, Carson Graney. Carson, thank you for joining us, and how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. How are you guys? Absolutely awesome, man. We're happy to have you on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So to kind of give you the viewers at home some background info on Carson. So during the 2021 to 22 season, Carson, you had 44 points in 13 games played with Council Rock North High School. You had 29 goals, 15 assists. And in that same year, you tallied 26 points in 32 games played with the Philadelphia Revolution 16U AAA team. And then Carson popped off yet again at Council Rock North High School during the 2022-23 season when he notched 14 total points in only eight games played. That's right, only eight games played. And then Carson would eventually join the Mercer Chiefs, where you played on their 18U AAA team. Does all that sound right to you, Carson? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, you yeah. got it down. <laughs> and now he's at the sweetest place on earth, Hershey, PA. But uh, Carson, it seems like no matter where you play, you're a point machine. So like... How were you able to produce so many points on numerous teams? Talk us through that here. Uh, yeah, with the well, all the teams that I'm joining, I'm playing with great, great people. Like my line mates, for example, Marco and Jr. Like you don't find anything better than that. And everywhere I go, I I seem to find people that I can build a connection off of, and it just it seems to work. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. I mean, like, I remember when I played, like, your line mates, you know, make you probably half the player you are. I mean, like, you're only as good as the people you're around, right? So you got to surround yourself with a room full of mirrors and a whole room full of winners. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, you know, what were some influential factors in your decision to come to Hershey and, you know, play with the Cubs here? Um, So, as you, I don't know if you know or not, but Colin Lakaitis and David Cook, we both, we all played at Paul Meyer together. Um, so we we were talking about that for a while, and then I was in contact with Brennan and came out and skated with the Cubs last year, and everything just – I loved it all. Everything seemed great, and I could see myself here, so that's where I put myself. And now you arrived at the beginning of the season, is that correct? Yeah, correct. So, and is this your first USPHL season, like, ever? Like, your first time yeah. like, at this level? Yeah, so, first two years. And, you know, going, yeah, going through, you know, going through your elite prospects, it looks like, I mean, every level you played at, I mean, it's not, you know, any shabby level. You're playing AAA, you're playing Council Rock North High School. And correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, that's like Flyers Cup League. That's like, yeah, that's some elite high school hockey in the area. Yeah, there's some, there's some very good teams down there. A lot of good kids. I mean, yeah, it's good, so, good hockey down there. Yeah. So how do those levels compare to where you're playing at right now with Hershey? um Hershey's definitely it's obviously the next step up like and you can tell um but you know like the high school leagues down there they're great the the trip away in Jersey is phenomenal um so yeah it's it I'd compare it right there with the high-end trip away that I've been playing for the past couple of years it's 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 awesome you want I was, what was the yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What yeah. was the first thing you noticed that you realized that you that this is a different level and, you know, the skill is a little bit higher than what you had recently been playing? Like, what was that, like, almost a welcome to the USPHL type moment? Um, I'd say the speed. There's definitely a, the next level is a bit faster. And uh, the, the decision makings that kids are making, I mean, you have the older kids. Kids are going to be making better decisions, smarter decisions. So – just knowing where to be and what other people were thinking and keeping your head on your teammates heads level, you know, so you're all on the same page. I think that was the biggest welcoming. Have you, you know, you Clay, you talked about a welcome to the USPHL moment. Did you ever have that welcome to the USPHL hit where you, you realized, Hey, like this is, this is where the big boys play now. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been brutally, brutally hit a couple of times, but <laughs> it's all right. It's how you, it's how you learn. It's how you get better. So you've laid some like guys it. out yourself. I was just about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I you, you know how you're not the tallest dude, but you pack a punch, man. Yeah, I I try and not let myself fall. 
dude, yeah. dude never uh <laughs> never mess with the man who might be short in stature but the small ones right. are always the mighty ones I've, I've seen you come out there and absolutely flatten when i mean flatten i'm talking like pancake flatten yeah. guys that are like dude six four six two like dude there was no way when i played i was going up to a guy who was like six two and trying to level him into next week it just wasn't wasn't gonna happen <laughs> yeah Three. that's like I grew up with three older brothers, though. I was always getting picked on growing up, so I don't really care what the size of them <laughs> are or anything. I just – I fight for my own. Carson, you hear him here first, man. He is dangerous. Yeah. And he is reckless going after those guys with the puck. But, you know, before before you came here, did you ever have a chance to play for, like, a championship? You know, I you know you played for Council Rock North, so did you guys ever have a chance to play for a Flyers Cup at all? Uh, yeah, we actually went to Flyers Cup both years that I was at Council Rock my sophomore and junior year. Our, uh, our so My sophomore year, we lost to Hershey in quarterfinals. Um, and then my junior year, we lost to Hershey in quarterfinals again. That was my last high school game, which I got to see Colin on the bench because he was the coach for Hershey. So I got to see him there. And I don't know, it's a small world. So it's cool. You want to talk about a small world? I'm pretty sure I played you in that game, buddy. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So you guys, you guys were like the team to beat, and I remember coming into that game, and we were like Council Rock North. You got to keep an eye on that granny kid. Got to keep an eye yeah. on that granny kid. Got to slow him down yeah. as much as we can. Because <laughs> yeah. if he gets off and running, he's a game wrecker. And boy, oh boy, were they right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so far this season, we have seen your line. You talk to him a lot about so far this, this episode, which I originally called the third line beauties. Y'all ain't third liners anymore. <laughs> We've seen you guys produce time after time again. So how do you guys maintain that high level of chemistry? And would you say this is the best chemistry you've had with any of your line mates ever? Yeah, I would 100% easily say it, like, I've had great connections in the years past, but this is like an unbelievable connection that I have with these two. I mean, I feel like their head's in the same game that I am all at all times, and everything just always seems to work. And I don't know. I, lo I love playing with those two. It's great. You know, Clay, you see it as well as I do. I mean, you want to comment on the chemistry they have. It's been fantastic this year. Oh, it's just beautiful. I mean, when you look at the way that they, they pass the puck with each other, they set each other up, they're – all three of their IQs are so high, especially Carson. I mean, not to take away from the other two and, and, and John and Marco, but I wanted to touch on that specifically. Like, we all like ooh and ah at your stick work and the way you can finish at the <laughs> net, right? Yeah. But your IQ and the what your decision making with the puck for where to go, when to pass it, or when to shoot is just beyond comprehensible sometimes. It's amazing. I love what you're able to do. Can you just speak on that for a little bit? Like, how, what goes into that process when you're like, have to make a quick decision right there in the moment on the ice. Yeah, so uh, when I have the puck on my stick, or at least when I touch the ice, first of all, I, like my my main goal is to just score. That's like yeah. that's I love fires that. me. I love yeah. That. yeah, I just want to score every time I have the puck on my stick. So I I wouldn't say I'm a shoot first person, but you know if if I think that there's an opportunity open for one of my line mates. I'm going to get give them the puck because I know if they don't have anything that they'll give it right back. But I know if I give it to them when they're open, they're going to put it in the back of the net. So, I mean, hey, pucks on net's always a good thing to try to try to do. There's good things will happen when you keep doing that. Just feed it to the goaltender. Right. You know, I think, you know, time and time again, we've seen you guys. And I think the word that comes to mind describing your line is confidence, right? Yeah. You know, you know, first of all, the biggest thing that I see and I love out of you guys is you're not afraid to make mistakes, right? Mm. We know that, you know, players aren't perfect. I mean, I was far from perfect when I played. And you guys, you're not afraid to make those mistakes and learn from them. And, you know, if you guys do make mistakes, I see you make up for it on the next shift or the next play. Like, you guys are the tone setters. We've seen a time right. about again, and, you know, Clay talked about it. When we had Brady Boudreaux on here, he spoke about your hockey IQ and how far off the charts it was. I mean, some of the ways you see the game, Carson, is just very, very impressive and has that like changed at all since you arrived at the Cubs? Like, was it like that at Council Rock and Mercer? Uh, yeah. So, I've always I've always had an extremely high confidence. Not like I'm not I'm not a cocky person. I just right. I feel confident right. within myself. Um, 
but yeah, I've always had that confidence boost in me, but when I arrived at Hershey, I think it took another level. I mean, Brennan, he made me feel like I could do whatever, like I felt that I needed to do. Um, he lets me make mistakes. Of course, he'll, he'll let me know that I did that, but <laughs> we're, we're all learning. And uh, yeah, I think my confidence has boosted a lot since I've been here. And thanks to Brady and Brennan. Do a lot of guys at practice sometimes ask you, like Carson, like for any advice on like how to see the game better at all? Because like, like I mentioned, your game, your the way you the visually aspect of your game is just perfect, man. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I haven't, I haven't really had people come up and ask me that specifically, but I've had a couple. What are you doing? Moments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's like, you, you got to elaborate on that. You can't just say that. And, yeah. you know, not go well, down that rabbit hole. Well, I try and do some things sometimes that. I don't know, are questionable because I, oh, I, we, I, we can see that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, don't lie. Yeah, don't but, lie. yeah. So I do, I do some things that are questionable, but they know I'm, I'm trying to be creative and I'm just trying to make the right play or do something nice, you know? So, yeah. Well, speaking, speaking of nice with it, Carson, we have seen you make some magical moves this season to put yourself in a scoring position you know, one move me and Clay in particular have seen a lot is that nasty, nasty, and I mean nasty, toe drag of yours. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, what's what's your go-to dangle? What dangle you pulling out of your magic box of tricks first? Yeah, no, the toe drag's probably probably my favorite play right now. I mean, I've been working on that all summer. Um, I mean, just time after time, just toe drag shot, toe drag shot, toe drag shot, and it's come together, and I've been able to put a couple in and back in the net with it. So that's probably my go-to right now. Couple's an understatement, Clay. Your uh, yeah. <laughs> your take on that toe drag release? I I've never played hockey. I only become a broadcaster and a fan more or less in the past few years, and I'm I'm still learning. But that is one of the coolest things I've seen on the ice in a Cubs uniform. So that's my tip of the hat to you for that. I appreciate. But I feel like I feel like we've uh, pumped his tires up quite a bit so far on this episode not to say we shouldn't this dude's resume is off the charts what is he closing in on 40 points so yeah, far closing on 40 and, points this season yeah yeah, you got 39 yeah so you're you're gonna get there but don't i wanted to get him. into I wanna, i'm him, not man. jinxing I, Come we're, on broadcasters. Now. we're broadcasters you have to report the facts it's not jinxing bro we've jinxed a lot of people if, this if you're year, a broadcaster man. if you're a broadcaster and you're co- calling baseball you have to say that there are no hits allowed so far nothing matters this dude's that's fair this that's dude's fair. Unreal. that is valid you guys know how it goes you've, you've called me out a couple times we have oh, no. the broadcast. <laughs> one of the... he looks a little quiet today uh, yeah we, we we we're the positive jinx of anything for anything we've ever seen that is true so it is yeah. what it is fine yeah. there's wood right here i'll knock on it fine but <laughs> yeah. Something that I want to get to because I speak spoke of points. You notched two more goals to add to your point total this past weekend against Powell. You guys dropped the first two games this season. You, you dropped the season series. You go one and three. But what's that momentum shifter like when you guys come back and at least get one on the road against them uh, in mm-hmm. the toughest part of your schedule coming up? Yeah, I, I think it's huge knowing that knowing that we can uh, beat them, knowing that we can compete with those higher teams. I think it's a good first uh first set of games to start what we're about to play because we have a lot of a lot of tough games coming up here so I think that's a good first start um splitting with them isn't what we wanted we wanted to obviously take those two and split the season series but it is what it is um we we have a few more points than them so we just got to keep winning and uh yeah we just got to keep winning you know, you got yeah, a big don't. test this weekend, you know, yeah. breast cancer awareness night. And I'm sure you've seen the new jerseys being released. What are your take on the new breast cancer awareness night jerseys? Yeah, I think those are sick. They look beautiful and yeah. obviously for a great cause. So I think they're awesome. Yeah, great cause, but a bigger game too. You know, talk exactly. about, you know, I got my pink on here for today, but, you know, talk yeah, about yeah. that game and what that means going forward this season because you don't have many home games left, right? A lot of road games yeah. on the calendar here. On the later half of the stretch so you know how important is it to win at home when you have the chance i think it's very important especially with the team that we're playing and you know utica is a great team um so it's gonna it's gonna let us know where we're at as a team and what we have to work on and 
we're gonna see we're gonna see the strong teams for the rest of the way out. So I mean, if we can figure it out now, fix it, work on it, and keep developing, I think by the end of the season we're not we're not uh we're not out of the national championship race. Oh, I don't think absolutely not, absolutely yeah. not. This is the way you guys have played this season, and I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of both me and Clay. It's a team, right? It's not an right. individual team. It's everybody's coming together to make something happen. And we've seen the, re the results, right? I mean, like you guys had your back against the wall. The first game I ever called for you guys in New Jersey, you know, the Rockets Hockey Club, you had a five yeah. goal, you had a five goal third period, five goal yeah. third period. You know, you didn't have always the best starts. You guys fixed that up and now you're starting off strong in games. So you work on things, you've gotten better. And I mean, Clay, I mean, your take on this, but this team, from what I'm seeing recently, has only gotten stronger. Oh, 100%. I mean, it's kind of been like a beating the dead horse type of thing when it comes to the podcast. I mean, we, we rave yeah. about this team's chemistry. And and the perfect example is what we talked about before, this line of Taffo, Graney, and uh, John Ryan. And just the fact that that line keeps getting better, the depth is obviously showing every every single game they play they've done a great job so far and you guys have only gotten better and even with better competition you know you haven't won every single game so far but i feel like some of that has had to do with some stipulations like, like the last the first time you guys faced pal it was going into a break and your pro your bodies are worn down you're tired then you come back from a break you play you play well against buffalo but you get the two, you get the two dubs, and then you come. You have to go on the road to Pal, so it's a little different. You still split one, so right. coming back home, I think you guys are gonna be a great challenge for you to go for them as well as they're a good challenge for you guys. I think it'll be a, it'll be exactly. a great couple games. I think it's gonna be a fabulous weekend. Um, with we have the Rocket Skin actually on Sunday too, so it's gonna be a great weekend of hockey with two Uticas and the Rockets. So. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I know I, uh, Rockets have been getting better too, so that'll be another great, another great game. So, well, and they yeah. were solid when you guys played them. I think it was early, what, late September, early October. I mean, you guys yeah. faced them earlier. They were solid then, and you guys had to, you know, come from behind and get that W. But you know, Carson, you got some big games this weekend, and we've seen you make some magical moves this entire season. But you know, you've had some filthy goals, right? Filthy, absolutely filthy. And there have been numerous times where we've seen you go coast to coast, you know. But the ones I want to talk about are the bar down, the bar down goals. So I got to ask the magician himself, what's your trick to making the iron sing like it's the Sydney Opera House out here at Hershey Park Arena? I don't know. I, I'll i be honest. A lot of the times when I do shoot, like I'm, I'm aiming for a post because, I mean, there's not much room to look at with these with these goalies. So. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the times I will shoot for a post and they, they'll go posting in or bar down, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems to happen quite quite often. So We saw one. Uh, hey, aim, sm uh, aim small, miss small. Aim small, miss small, baby. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Aim small, miss small. But, yeah. like, you know, you talk about the size of the goaltenders in this league, and that's kind of something I wanted to speak about as well. They're great. You know, we yeah. have a great goaltending club here at Hershey, but the goalies you're facing – are also top tier as well. So how are you able to kind of, you know, either set up your teammates or put your, put yourself in a position where you can, you know, make a difference because these goaltenders are next level. Yeah, you have to I agree the the goalies in the at this level are phenomenal. Um I think you have to get them moving a lot if you're going to beat them. So I think a lot of the lateral movement that we've been trying to use has been working and I really think that's the biggest thing is just getting the goalies to move side to side. Yeah, I mean, that's that's huge. I mean, that's something that the entire team does, not just you as well. So we ask, I feel like we ask this question a lot during the podcast, but it's definitely one I want to hear your take on. How do you prepare for games? And what does a pregame look like for you? What does postgame look like? I know, I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been Leduc who doesn't eat anything. Before the game. Oh, that's that's Marco. That's Marco. Yeah, I was. Yeah. No, it was yeah. Someone what su like that. what superstitions do you got, man? Yeah, hit him with us, if any, if any. So no, he's definitely before, got him. Yeah, <laughs> he's definitely. Before the him. game, before the game, uh, I like to get Chipotle. So like, I don't know. I just eat Chipotle every day. So I get Chipotle before the game, and then I'll get to the rink. Um, I'll sit there. I listen to music for a while, stretch out, and then I tape my stick, and then. 
after that, I just sit in my stall until till we go on the ice warm ups, and I just sit there and yeah, stay quiet. You like to keep to yourself. Silent You're assassin. very yeah. you're the silent assassin. I like that. Yeah, he lurks in the shadows. But uh, you well, know, what's your what's your go to uh, Chipotle meal? It's just about ass though. Sorry. Oh yeah. No, you're good. My my go to, I'll probably get a burrito, and then I get the white rice, chicken, and then the mild cheese and lettuce. And then the sauce. I won't call it tobacco sauce like Jay. Tobacco. Oh, tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't tobacco. believe you said yeah. that. That was funny. Dude, no, I, I use I use the I use the red one. I don't know what, what flavor it is, but he uses the that... green one. He uses the red one. Uh, okay, I think I, there's like a couple of different ones. I think one is just regular. The other one's Verde, just like straight up for green. And I think one of them is like, I don't know, like I think it says Chipotle on it too. I'm not yeah. sure, but yeah. I may have made a few trips to Chipotle myself and put on a lot of that tobacco, whatever. Tobacco, the tobacco sauce. Yeah. Yeah. That. yeah. John yeah. Ryan original no. right there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. So speaking of speaking of more outs off the ice stuff, well, what do you like to do off the ice? I mean, we've talked a lot about you know hockey and everything, but we found out you know John likes to golf a lot. What what are the things do you like to do? What's what's the uh the the side of Carson Green not many people know about? So during the season here, I I, I just stay here at the house. I mean, um, I'm still in school, so I I got a uh, little bit of online work that I got to do, so that takes up some of my day, and then. I mean video games to sit yeah. here. What's your what's your go-to video game? I gotta ask. I'm gonna be honest, it's probably Fortnite. No. I was hoping you wouldn't say that. <laughs> I knew dude, I knew he was gonna say he's definitely <laughs> not wouldn't I, I used to play. guy. No. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite and then I play um I play GTA a good bit too. So who uh who on the, the team do you feel like would give you the most competition in Fortnite? <laughs> Oh, Evan Singer, hundred <laughs> percent. He's like, I was to say, who are you? Like, who are you hopping on the battle bus with? Yeah, Evan, every time, hundred <laughs> percent. Is there a is there a teammate that you're like, nah, man, I ain't gonna have you on my battle bus. No way, no way. They are John Ryan. He oh, doesn't. Man. He has no IQ at all for that game. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm sure at PGA though, his IQ is off the charts. Oh yeah, we we do play PGA. We were playing it on a uh, Luke's. We were playing it on his uh, PlayStation there for a couple months. We, me and Jr. Every day we'd be on there playing that 2K23 golf game. So you know, yeah, that's fun. We talked about Jr.'s golf abilities last time while we were in the pod, and you kind of made your little your little appearance in the back, little peekaboo appearance. But uh, you know, now is your time to you know justify your golf skills. What's uh? What's your favorite golf course that you've been to? What's your what's your best game, man? Um, so my favorite golf course I've ever been to, uh, I'd say the Iron Valley. I think. Oh, okay. Is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we just me and uh, John actually went there when we first moved to Hershey. Um, we went there, and it's beautiful, great, mm -hmm. great course. And um, my best round ever is a seventy nine. Holy smoke! It's it's on uh it's on my home uh hometown course. It's actually the only par and it has the only par six hole in Pennsylvania. Wait, what? Yeah, oh wow! Yeah, it's a it's a seven seven hundred yards like there's a slant going up. It's seven hundred yards uphill. Yeah, it's yes. <laughs> yeah. seven hundred yards uphill. Yep. Dude, oh my goodness, you gotta be like, I don't know, Dustin DeChambeau to drive that yeah. like 300 yards <laughs> off the tee to even yeah. get close to par in that thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah, nah. Did you par like that? Did five. you par that hole? I've actually birdied it. That's the best I've ever done on it. You wow. birdied that that's hole? Impressive. Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. nuts. Yeah, but um I'd say I'd say John's definitely got the upper edge on the golf game than me, because I'm not the most consistent out there, but uh I, I can give it a good round here and there. Dude, I'd say 79 is pretty, pretty good. I yeah. don't know if you're shooting 79 all the time, but that's. No, no. no <laughs> not even close. I'm like a, I'm like a mid nineties, low nineties guy. Dude, that's still solid though. Like that's, that's, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Like there've been times, man, like where I'm just getting back into it. I'll go back on the course and I'm like, Oh, 
160. <laughs> it's a bad day. It's those are the kind of days you want to throw the scorecard in the fire pit, man. Yeah, exactly. There are days where I get through 12 holes and I'm like, can I go now? I don't really want to keep going. And well, then yeah, you're like, at, or or when I get to nine, I'm like, well, that's only nine. I might as well just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well just keep my score dipped. <laughs> <laughs> Use but, my front nine score as uh tell everybody is my eighteen score. Exactly, that's that's the way to be successful at golf. For, forge the <laughs> yeah. golf score, man. Forge the golf score. <laughs> yeah, you know. But I was going to ask you. You know, you're a big Chipotle guy. Trevor Zegras got the Chipotle sponsorship. What is it going to take to get Carson Gray to the Chipotle sponsorship? I'd do anything for that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Chipotle, hook this man up. Hook this yeah, man up. Yeah. <laughs> Get the sponsor patch on the jersey, man. Get this. This get this that'd guy hooked great. up. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, Carson. Final. Oh, oh, wait, wait. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. You just said jersey. I forgot. Yo, are you guys gonna wear those black, the black jerseys at I was home? Gonna ask I think, are you guys going that. to? Because those are sick. Because I forgot yeah. you guys were wearing them this past weekend, and then I saw the pictures. Yeah, I'm sure we'll wear them at uh, a home game before before we're out of out of home games. Um, I don't know if we'll wear Didn't them this guys... weekend. But I think we'll get them in at least once. You know, I didn't you guys get to design them? Yeah, so I think a couple of players got to got to throw them together and uh, make a concept, and then we ended up with we had like two different concepts, and we ended up picking the one that we have now, and I I think it's beautiful. Did yeah. you did you participate in the concepts then, or was were some of your ideas taken? I. I voted on the other jersey. I'm not gonna lie. I, <laughs> I like the other jersey a little better, but I, now that I I see these ones in person, I think I don't, I wouldn't like. I think they're awesome. Me. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that because when I first saw these, I mean, Clay is my witness can testify. As I asked him, I'm like, Clay, what do you think of these new thirds? He goes, Dude, they're awesome. I'm like, Eh. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sold yet. Yeah. And Clay's like, Dude, they're awesome. They're you got to get behind. I'm like, All right, all right, all right. But now that I you saw, you can't go wrong with black helmets, black shorts, and the, yeah, I know, but the like, black jersey, you can't so go wrong with that. I don't know, but at first I wasn't feeling it, but then when I saw them this weekend, I was like, "Holy cow, those those thirds are kind of fire." Yeah, they look fresh out there on the ice. Yeah, they were. So, sometimes graphics don't do the best. I mean, it, I think it was just the site that like mocked it up and like showed you, showed you guys the picture. Probably, I don't know, but mm. once you see stuff in person, it looks a lot better. Like sometimes people rag on like pro uniforms for any sports and they're like this isn't cool and then they like wear it for the first time they're like oh that's actually pretty dope yeah exactly exactly so carson final question here to kind of put a bow on this episode as the playoffs loom you know what is the mindset going down the stretch we've kind of touched on this a little bit but can you elaborate on that more yeah we just got to keep our confidence high i mean we're pretty we're a very overall confident team um we've been working on a lot of our defensive defensive end uh in practices because i feel that's most important really um i mean we've proved to everybody that we're a scoring team um so we've been working on a lot of defensive reads and stuff in practice and i think it's all coming together and um i think yeah i, I think we just got to go in with a lot of confidence and know that we can win and i think that we will win if we if we have that mindset you know and kind of you know coming all together with that point of coming all together you know it's been great to see you know a lot of players come back from injury right you know especially Noritsky and then you have Gallagher coming back as well and you know your buddy Lokitis as well he's back right. in three as well so getting those guys back especially you know solidify the defensive end was a huge boost to you guys I'm sure of it yeah definitely having uh, having Michael back from Poland is huge um he's very he's a very skilled kid so having him back is just phenomenal. Um, having Gallagher back, top defenseman, like it's all coming together well, and it's all seeming to fit in right. So hopefully it goes the way that it is right now. Well, is there anything you'd like to say out of the the Cubs fan, Cub Nation, before we kind of wrap this one up? Then, uh, I don't, I don't know. Put me on the spot. I'm not good on the spot. <laughs> He's not good on the spot. He's not good on the spot. But well, with that, Carson, or should I say the magic man, thank you for joining us on this edition of The Roar. I'm Joshua Gearhart alongside Clay Thomas. And find us on YouTube, Hershey Cubs The Roar, as well as at Hershey Cubs on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or Hershey Cubs on Facebook. Hit that like button, subscribe, and or follow us on all accounts. You guys know how to end this one up. Fear 
Yeah. Yeah. 